Hello there everybody and welcome back to another episode of Anacologist Plays Green Hell where we are back in the Amazon. Of course this is the channel where we get to talk about nature while playing games. Now, our current objective is to collect a whole bunch of long sticks because we are going to need that at base. Bunch of long sticks and a bunch of logs. So let's get cracking. If you are new to the channel, welcome, glad you are here with us, and I hope you learn something along the way as we play this game and talk about all the interesting things we encounter. Now, of course, if you do have any questions, do feel free to pop that in the comments below, and I will happily answer as best I can. Now, what we have here is something, uh, is something you have to look out for. <laughs> uh, okay, I got too close there. So this here is an ant mound, and in there we have bullet ants. And bullet ants, oh my, oh my, they are, I think they rank on Schmidt's pain sting index. They rank the highest of all insects. So Schmidt was an entomologist that decided, you know, what's going to be fun? Let's rank all the insect bites, or as many insect bites and all kinds of bug bites and stings according to the pain that they give you. And the bullet ants here, they are the highest ranking of all insects. So apparently, well, Schmidt described the pain as, you know, walking over hot coals with a nail embedded in your heel, which to me doesn't sound like a lot of fun at all. In Venezuela, as far as I recall, also the nickname means 24 hour ant, because that's how long you are going to be in pain after you had been stung by one of these. So it's not a fun thing at all. But the best part is then that in one of the indigenous tribes in South America, there is an initiation rite, which is performed by people who want to be leaders or warriors of the tribe, where they put make a glove and then they paralyze a lot of these bullet ants and they are paralyzed with a natural sedative and then 80 of those bullet ants are woven into that glove and the initiate then has to put on the gloves and hold it there for i think five to ten minutes and they have to repeat this initiation right 20 times over the course of the next few months so for a very very long time they then have to <laughs> endure this and afterwards they basically their arm is paralyzed by the stings so yeah not 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 fine at all but this here is the bullet ant, and you can harvest them, and the best way to harvest them is actually to use a smoke or to, you know, equip a torch. And this is now in-game. Don't, don't do this in real life and expect you're going to not get stung. But if you, in the game, equip a torch, you can actually get close to the ants without them stinging you. And then you can collect some ants. You may ask, why on earth do you want to collect the ants? Well, the thing is, the soldiers have got these massive mandibles that you could potentially even use if you encounter, for example, a jaguar and you get horribly scratched up if you don't have any armor. If you get scratched up, you can then take those ants and you can actually put it over your lacerations to seal up the wound so that it then heals nicely. Now, in the game, you can actually carry around these ants in your backpack for a very very long time period of course in reality those ants would be all over your backpack and they would just go crazy you wouldn't be able to carry them around like that but this is a game after all and you can do all kinds of interesting things in games now i remember first hearing about using ants as stitches basically or natural stitches i remember that from a book oh i read when i was a kid where it said that in africa many ant species are utilized for that purpose which i thought you know that's that's brilliant now, of course, I haven't had the opportunity to use them myself, but the idea is that termites in particular may actually be perhaps a little bit better to use, I think. But the idea is you agitate those soldier ants or termites enough to actually open up their jaws. You then hold them close to the wound and you let them bite fast. Uh, that's, that's a spider. There's a spider. There's something. There's a spider here. Yeah, I can't see it. I'm just going to walk the other way. Not go in that direction. But yeah, you'll then agitate them enough that they actually bite onto your wound and then close shut. And then you break off the body. You leave only the head attached to your wound. And the idea then is that the head remains behind and actually just closes up that wound very nicely for you. As I said, I've never had the opportunity to actually try that yet. And to some extent, that is something I'm very thankful for. The fact that I haven't had to use ants or termites as natural stitches. All right, our sled is basically full and we are heading home again. Now, as mentioned previously, in South America, the wheel wasn't really used. Instead, things were carried along with the sleds like this. And it makes sense, you know, trekking through, oh, let's just quickly stop here. Trekking through the jungle with wheels, with tires, would be very, very difficult. I mean, your wheels or your tires would get stuck so often. So a sled, it just makes more sense 
to actually in South America, for example, carry things from point A to point B. So it's not that the wheel wasn't invented. There are some toys in South American uh, old uh, ruins, for example. They have found toys with wheels, so they knew about the wheel, but it wasn't useful. So anyway, this plant here, this is what we in South Africa called Madumbi or elephant's ear, as it is also called. And we should be able to get a lovely tuber at the bottom there. There we go, unknown bulb. Now the madumbi or the elephant's ear, or also known as taro, what it will do is it will store its nutrients in that bulb. But you have to prepare it well or correctly because there's a good chance that the, well, the plants in the Araceae family or the Aramili family, but there we go, there we go. I knew it was going to come. There, dinner has arrived. <laughs> oh my word. Hello piggies, yes. I have just taken down this thing. Okay, let's just quickly put some more planks on the fire here. Oh, so we can put some meat on the barbie. I mean, I've already killed this thing and my heart is racing. Oh, but yeah, the jaguar, It's a, I constantly have to look out for them. Off screen, I have been attacked so many times by this jaguar in particular as he comes and, <laughs> you know, stalks his territory. But that is the thing, there will only be one jaguar in this area. Jaguars and many of the large cats, with the exception of course of lions, they are extremely territorial. And you won't find more than one hanging around in the same area. As apparently a thunderstorm is coming, we can just quickly drink. Uh, we can drink the last one as well as we shuffle around. And let's drink some meat soup here. Lots of energy for us there, so we don't get tired. And since we have found these Bridal Veil Stinkhorn Mushrooms, we're just going to put some of these in as well. Okay, I'm just going to go up to our storage chests here. Of course, we do have a wasp nest right over there somewhere, which is perhaps not ideal. <laughs> Hopefully they don't attack us while we are here. Alright, but now we can run around without fear. Because we have killed the resident jaguar, we can go on and do our stuff here. So what we need, of course, a whole bunch of long sticks, four long sticks, four normal sticks, four rope to tie everything together, and then we need banana leaves. And the idea with the banana leaves is that it will have water as it is raining. It's going to funnel down along there and actually fall into the pot, for example. Or if you're looking at nighttime, for example, and there's dew in the dry season in particular, that's very useful. So any moisture in the air will condense on the leaves and then run down the funnel into the pot below. So this is not so much a wet season thing to build. This is definitely a way, though, to survive the dry season. But we, in any case, are right here by the water, so it's not that crucial. Still nice to build, though. Now, of course, we need to collect some banana leaves, and there's a very good chance that they are going to be centipedes. Yep, there we go, right there, in the banana leaf, because it has been lying on the ground for a while. There it is now, Scolopendra Amazonica, I believe it was, the Amazonian giant centipede. Oh, uh, gives me the heebie-jeebies every time. Like, I love centipedes. I love encountering them in the garden. But there's something about them in the game here that just uh, gives me the heebie-jeebies. But of course, they are amazing creatures. I absolutely adore centipedes. Those fangs they have at the, t at the tip there, they're not mouth parts. Unlike with a lot of other venomous creatures like spiders and snakes, your venom is not injected with mouth parts. Instead, it's the first pair of legs that are modified to uh, give you a nice venomous, well, technically I guess, sting rather than bite. And in the past, while, while I've been gardening and taking out a whole bunch of old things and logs and stuff in our garden, I have encountered so many of the centipedes just chilling around in our garden. I love it. They're basically the interns in the garden where they are taking out a whole bunch of pest creatures. So, I love them. I even had one running on my hand the other day. I really don't mind it. But, in the game here, the big ones, the Scolopendras. <laughs> That's a different story altogether. All right, our first one is done. I'm just going to put the leaves on there, not going to worry too much about this now, but we can put a pot or something underneath there. And to do that, what I really, really, really want to start doing is pottery. And here we go, here is the pottery table. This is our next thing that we're going to build. Let's see, where can we build that? I think we can build that right over here. Yeah, it's not too big. Nice spot for it. 
I do see we do have insomnia once more, so we're just going to take a quick little nap here. And there we go, we are ready to carry on. Now getting the planks not hard at all. Previously it used to be a little bit more uh, difficult because you had to really consider do you want the trees to be gone because they did not regrow back in the day. Nowadays of course it does regrow in the game here, but you basically just take a log and you kind of smash it up to get the planks. And unfortunately it seems I do already have three planks. So let's just quickly go over here, put these three planks in. Now the planks we have here actually seems to be a piece of the outside bark that we have with a log. That's what we are actually putting down here. Okay, we need normal sticks. Of course I could also harvest these long sticks, that's going to give me the normal sticks. But I also do have a lot of normal sticks right up here. Plus we've got this, you know, another bridal veil mushroom. And the soups, that's just so useful for carbohydrates. And there we go, easy peasy. And four more long sticks coming up. All right, and four ropes to tie together, and now, oh my word, okay, we need a bamboo log. Now, yeah, so about that, bamboo logs, I think the best place to get that is up there. I think there's bamboo right over there. So we're just going to take a quick little look up there, but I first need to make an axe, because I do not actually have an axe. Now, we do need to still do something with this unknown bulb, with this madumbi that we harvested. We can't let this go to waste. So what we'll do is we'll just harvest it, because with it then, we are going to get a whole bunch of smaller tubers. This Yes, the unknown root. We've got two of those. Uh, we can plant these to actually get another big bulb. And what the taro or the madumbi will do is actually make a whole bunch of little smaller tubers that you can eat. I'm not sure why they've got this big one in the game, but I guess you've got to harvest something and then decide, okay, am I going to eat it or going, am I going to plant it? And if you have a whole bunch of these madumbis in a little farming plot over here, or a bunch of farming plots, you can eat half of them and harvest half of them to replant. So that's a nice way to go about doing things so you can become really, really self-sufficient. And they are a marvelous, marvelous source of starch. But you've got to cook them. I'm don't, not sure whether you can eat them in-game raw, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't eat taro uh, at all raw because as I was trying to say, and I forgot earlier because there was a jaguar, you know, uh, but a lot of the plants in the Aracy family, in the Aram family, what, will, what they'll have are calcium oxalate crystals, which are if you've ever accidentally eaten Aram Lily or you've accidentally eaten taro raw or you have eaten delicious monster raw, yeah, those are the things that make your mouth sting and burn and itchy itches and yeah, it's not good. That's a defense against things eating it. And then we as humans go, you know what? I think we'll eat this. This looks nice. This looks fine. I'm sure the stinging is just all the weakness leaving my body. It's leaving my body through my mouth. As we are just slowly but surely making our way home. I'm just trying to stay out in the open. But we can actually see if there are any spiders or snakes or anything in the way. Okay, at least we do have bamboo up there. If we, for example, want to make prawn traps later, we can get some bamboo logs up there as well. Alrighty, now we need three more planks and a coconut bowl. Now the coconut bowl, that's going to be very, very easy. Now even the planks, also quite easy. We have got more logs over here that we can chop to get some planks. And there we go, three of those, now it's just a coconut bowl. We do, however, again have leeches, it's the wet season, leeches, leeches everywhere. They're just trying to drink our blood so that they can survive. They're just doing their thing, but their thing is irritating. And when you look at that, we have the pottery table. Now, what we have here, we need to make a small clay bowl, or actually, I think we can actually, yeah, we can decide. We can make a big clay bowl, we can make a clay bottle, or a small clay bowl. So we can make any one of these three items. And you'll see at the bottom here, we can put empty molds, and over here we can put melted iron ore. Hmm, okay. I'm not sure what the melted iron ore is for, but I guess that means we should get the forge up and running once more. So let's start burning some charcoal. Oh, never mind. I thought we still need to burn the charcoal, but we've got lots over here. Okay, never mind. So here's a tip. If, for example, you can't reach that back one, just go into your backpack and you can drag it out easy peasy like that. Luckily, we've got lots of dry leaves. Doesn't matter that we just used one. So let's ignite that and put some ore in there. Now, one thing we still do not have is a fireplace, like in here. So what we're going to do now 
is build the mud fireside wall. And yeah, there we go. We can build that right here. So we need some long sticks and we need a lot of mud bricks. This has been simplified. Previously, you had to first build a frame and then you had to build this wall. But now you can just build it all in one go. All right, this should be the last one. And there we go. Now we should be able to actually make a little fire right over here. Put four pots on here and cook away and have a whole bunch of soups always ready for us. So we don't have to go and make it here anymore. We can make a little fire there just to let burn out for more ash and stuff like that. But we also at the same time still have our charcoal furnace up there. So we don't need to. But we, we're going to also now do is take a mud brick and harvest it. And you can see we have in our backpack one empty mold. Let's just see. Oh, no, I can't pick up another one. Okay. Now that empty mold, as our iron, iron is almost done, the empty mold we can put down there. And there we go, we have three melted iron ore. We're going to just put that in there because I don't know why, but we're doing that. And we're just going to take these other two empty molds and put them in as well. Now we also need to add water because of course we need the mud bricks here. We need to actually be able to shape it and oh my word, I did not fill up my coconut bidons. We need to put in a lot of water to actually fill it, but we don't need to fill it up anymore in order to make something. Okay, so we've put in, I think, a hundred water into this. And that's, what, of course, what the bamboo log is for. So, interesting with the bamboo, you can see there's a little ring right over there. That's what we call the node, and you'll find that on most plants. You'll find the nodes and this section between two nodes so there's a node at the bottom there's a node at the top here this section is what we call the internode because well it is the area between the nodes inter meaning between and in the grasses what very often happens is that that node is solid and the internode is hollow so technically this could perhaps work to some extent not sure how much water you'll lose from it that will actually filter out or fall out of this little section here but you could potentially use it to hold some water now apparently our little guy is extremely thirsty i don't know why maybe the dry season has begun and he's just lost all hope are we just going to drink some meat soup uh, dry season has not commenced because well there we go it's going to start raining again but yeah now jake is looking much better anyway what we are going to do is we're going to make our first pot i think we're actually going to make a big clay bowl we need three empty molds for that and a hundred uh, water. We've got 105 water in there. So we can make a big clay bowl. And this is just marvelous. Now, where are you? Oh, there we go. It's right over here. And I think we need to now make a fire in order to bake it. So that it, of course, hardens. Now, what I have actually realized this morning is that I'm a very isolationist player in this game. Like, I haven't really explored a lot. I mean, if you look at where we had been, we started up here, I believe. Yeah, we started up here, made our way down to the fishing dock, then went down, found our base over here. We've been mostly running around right over here. We've gone down, yes, to the cartel area over there, and we have visited those two caves there, and we went looking for some caves up here. But I haven't really gone and explored a massive area. I am very, very happy just kind of chilling around this area because I know it, it is safe. And I think that's actually very similar to my natural personality as well. I like being in an area that I am comfortable with, that I am familiar with. All right, let's just quickly once again make some more fire. All righty, there we go. I think now that we have got fire, we can put the big clay pot. There we go. It is actually going to, the big clay bowl is going to bake now. You know what? I think we're going to make another one. Because if we can make another pot, actually, I think I'll make two. <laughs> So if we can make three clay bowls, so if we can make four clay bowls, we can have two at the fire here for soup, and we can have two at the water collectors, which will also be, you know, great. So we have a lot of water at our disposal. Let's see how much water this clay bowl can hold. Well, 30. Well, that's nice. So in the one here, we can put our little bridal veil stinkhorn mushroom. And I think if we can get a peccary, we're going to... There we go. There's the peccary. We can put that in our other pot. And there we go, some nice peccary meat. Some peccary soup coming along. And wow, look at those lovely vitals. Oh, that's just marvelous. 
But I think that is also where we're going to end today's episode, everybody. We've started some pottery, we've survived, our base is coming along. Next time, I think we're going to go on a bit of an adventure. So next time, I'm going to make the clay bottle. And if we have that, we'll be able to go and explore a little bit better. Because we can put nice clean water in there and just carry it for long periods of time. So if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like, everybody. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow and reach us more people. And until next time, everybody, stay safe. I'll see you all soon. Bye.